Carolina. He's actually a, a colleague of Bart Ehrman, the same area. Um, he's, he's done another book on the Abrahamic religions. It's coming out in September. And once it's published next month, he'll, he, he wants to come in to talk about that. Um, and there are a couple of um, uh, female um, Muslim academics, uh, well, one from London, one from the States. Uh, the one from the States just published a book, Oxford University Press, on women in the Quran. Uh, and, and there's the London... Um, Sheikhina, I forget the, the female version of Sheikh, what's that in Arabic? Um, Sheikha. Sheikha, that's the word. Right. Uh, Sheikha, she's uh, based here and she, she's a proper Islamic scholar. Okay. Um, she's uh, definitely coming on. <coughs> I'm not quite sure when, but I wanted to talk about Islam and feminism. This whole thorny issue of gender relations in the Bible, in the Quran, I mean. It might be worth um, contacti contacting another lady. Uh, she's uh, teaching in the US. Her name is Asma Saeed. And she has written uh, about the role of Muslim women mm. in transmitting hadith knowledge in particular. Ah, right. That's interesting. Yeah, right. And she has covered, uh, uh, she has covered, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the history of about eight centuries. So she talks about the early period, mm. the second and the third century, mm. and then she talks about the le the, the later period. Uh, I think she, she oh, that's great. the yeah. Ottomans as well. Yeah. So she's a very interesting person to talk to as well. Another one is Usman Sheikh, uh, who, who you know, a friend of ours. Uh, yeah. He just finished postgraduate, sorry, uh, studies at Oxford, okay. and I've just read his thesis. He's, I think he's sent it to many people, and um, absolutely fascinating. I mean, he quotes. Uh, he, he he goes to task with. Christian scholars like Andy Bannister, who's also connected with Oxford University, because right. Banner, in his latest work on uh, do Christians and Muslims worship the same God, and the answer is no, in his view. But he said one of the reasons is that Muslims believe uh, the Quran talks about a remote, transcendent God who's all powerful and all knowing, but not a God of love, not a God of mercy. And I was reading this and I thought, what is he talking about? And indeed, the, the person who, the professor at Oxford who supervised Usman Sheikh's uh, research, when he read Andy Bannister's book, couldn't believe what he was reading. And he, he, uh, this Oxford professor is an expert in the field and thought, this is all wrong. And um, so part of Usman Sheikh's thesis is to refute uh, this, it, it, yes, uh, which is good because Andy Bannister has quite a a prominent role in uh, Christian apologetics, I think, right. particularly because of his connections with Oxford. And yet what he's producing would seem to be of extraordinarily uh, questionable quality, to put it diplomatically. Mm. And what, what Usman Sheikh did, and I like this, he quoted E.P. Saunders. E.P. Saunders is a great Christian biblical scholar who helped to introduce to uh, Western scholarship uh, a true understanding, accurate understanding of Judaism. Because we used to think in the West that Jews were, uh, like, like Muslims, it's all salvation by works. There's not a loving God, there's no grace. Christians believe in God of grace. Jews don't. And, and he helped to uh, obviously uh, deal with that, but in a very academic way in the 80s and 90s. So now Western scholarship has a. Jesus and Jews? Yes, uh, yeah, many books he's written. Uh, yeah, uh, E.P. Sanders, one of his... Uh, ab absolutely, he's still alive actually, an American scholar. And so he is he British or...? No, no, he's American. He's, American. Uh, he's taught, he was a professor at Oxford, but okay. he's also at Yale and all sorts of places. Okay. He's still alive, I say he's still alive, he's very elderly now. Um, so what, what he... Uh, and Usman Sheikh quotes E.P. Sanders uh, critique of the uh, distorted understanding we have in the West of Judaism as a parallel, uh, an analog to how Western uh, Christian missionary scholars are still treating Islam right. because it, look, we need to do the same for Islam that we did for Judaism. Right. In other words, to have an accurate, objective understanding right. and not come out with these tired tropes that you know there isn't a God of love in Islam, and, uh, which is obviously not true. Um, and he does that really well, Usman Sheikh, in his uh, thesis, uh, and a few other Christian scholars as well. Now, I must say uh, that many Christian scholars in the West now, particularly at Cambridge, do have a good understanding of Islam, a proper understanding, like David Ford, who's professor of divinity at Oxford, at uh, Cambridge, who's a Christian, and he has a very nuanced and uh, sophisticated understanding of the Quran. But some others, particularly evangelical Christian scholars, like Andy Bannister, don't. Uh, and they're publishing now and saying the same stuff even today, and I was really shocked when I read it. Do you think um, that theology blinds them? Yes, absolutely. That, that's exactly what it is. So scholarship means nothing in their case? I don't know what it is. They, they have a, a, a kind of theological apparatus when they look at the, they, they think, well, Christianity is a God of grace, as a God of grace. Islam obviously doesn't, because if it did, that would be Christianity, because right. we believe that. So Islam must teach something else or something. 
But of course, they can't see the elephant in the room, which is the truth. And that's not the truth, they believe. So, I mean, I've seen this repeatedly with, with many uh, evangelical scholars yeah. that for some reason yeah. they fail to see uh, <coughs> anything positive in Islam for that matter. <laughs> it, I mean, for, 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 for yes. God, you know, anything positive. Anything. Yeah. 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 They, struggle, they struggle to see anything positive. Yes. And this is where the academic credentials are questioned. They become questionable. I mean, it does. Come on, people uh, are not it does. Anyone, people, I know. I know. Yeah. I know. I mean, you're right. We, we, we have read people like uh, Giza Vermes, let's say, uh, E.P. Sanders, you mentioned, James D.G. Dunn, people like that. I mean, of course, these people haven't written on Islam. Uh, no. Uh, as such. But those who are writing on Islam, uh, they just simply cannot come around. The, the evangelical uh, outlook on Islam. You know, they just they simply, simply yes. can't abandon it. And see, it's interesting, other Christian groups, like the Catholic uh, yeah. scholarship now, a lot of Catholic scholarship is much more nuanced and yeah. sophisticated, right. or, 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 almost or, or, almost uh, uh, very positive towards Islam. I think it's because of the Second Vatican Council, where the church had a complete change in outlook vis-a-vis -vis the other religions. Right. And the Second Vatican Council has texts which say very positive things about Islam. Hmm. Um, and so the tradition is set now that they do that and that's the biggest church in the world the right. evangelicals haven't caught up and they're yes. still living in outdated uh, orientalist missionary paradigms in the 19th century right. and what's shocking is that Andy Bannister is a relatively young scholar uh, connected with Oxford University is producing stuff even now yes. um, that is read by uh, evangelicals which is misinforming them I mean, on a factual basis this, misinforming them this is the them. problem with a lot of evangelical Christians around the world they focus on these scholars yes. and they don't read it no. They don't look at other scholars. These scholars, because they tend to support, or they appear to be supporting their yes. narrative on Islam, yes. they they really focus on them. And they don't read. And I, I know, I, I think I know why. Because when I was an evangelical Christian, uh, um, I, I read evangelical. In my own mind, I'm sure it's true of everyone else. You want to read other authors who share your love for Jesus and who are who have that evangelical spirit, you trust them. Because they know the light, they know the truth, because they're good. I think we have Jesus problem with loving. Muslims as well. Yeah. To be fair, uh, and, we and have so, problem with Muslims as well. And so you read them and think, well, of course, if, you, if he's a good evangelical, he's going to be a God-fearing, honest person. Tell me the truth about Islam or anything else. But that's not the case, because, well, obviously. And you, well, you were well, talking about Islam. Yes, I, I, be, I agree. To, so. be fair, yeah. to be fair, yeah. we have this problem with the Muslims as well. Yeah. They like to read the scholars they trust. Yes, exactly. Uh, trust. It's all about trust. <laughs> that, and they trust Annie Bansik as yeah. an evangelical yeah. scholar. Yeah. The fact is, he's not telling them the truth, and yeah. that's the problem. And you need to read outside of the box to get a balanced view. Yeah. And that, that's, that's difficult, because you're moving out of your comfort zone to people who are not Christians or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that's more problematic because ha yeah. then you've got to assess their arguments, not not whether you trust them because they love the Lord like you do. You've got to engage the mind more, and that's harder work. Yes. Um, and they rely on them uh, heavily. I mean, there is uh, there are some recent names I can mention in this regard. People who have written on Islam and things Islamic. Uh, uh, Gordon Nickel. Oh, yes. He has written a book yes, on uh, uh, Muslim view in the Bible. Mm. And uh, evangelicals love it. And they're like He's Richard, um, what's his surname, um, his favourite, uh, his, his scholar at Oxford, uh, Richard Zetta, who comes here. Right. Uh, he, he finished his graduate, postgraduate studies at Oxford. He's his supervisor at Oxford, uh, uh, when he was at Oxford. Right. So yeah, he, he does, he's promoting that. There is Gabriel uh, Reynolds. Oh yes, in the yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah he's Catholic. Also, I don't know if he's, uh, he's Catholic. No, yeah, Roman Catholic. He, even his works are quoted heavily yeah. by evangelicals. He's quite active on Twitter, I follow him on Twitter. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Amazingly, uh, a lot of these people, they don't really they care about their academic credentials. I mean, they, they oh, I think Gabriel, uh, uh, he would. But uh, um, uh, he's, he's teaching in Notre Dame, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Usman Sheikh does engage with. Um, this whole question of whether or not the Bible endorses, sorry, the Quran endorses the Bible. Uh, he offers a very uh, sophisticated, uh, which I haven't read it all yet, an, anyway, analysis of how the Quran interacts in with, thesis, with in his thesis. Sorry, which uh, I'm, Mr. Sheikh will be talking about. Is on, this a PhD thesis or a master's thesis? It's a master's. Um, he will be talking about this on Blogging Theology um, soon. Uh, I, I, I can't remember if we've got a date or not. Yeah, we have got a date in September. Um, <coughs> And um, he, he's a very subtle analysis of how the Quran uh, corrects and amends the uh, biblical narrative in, in very distinctive and recognizable ways. 
Uh, so it's, it's unthinkable that it should be endorsing the Bible. It has a very uh, pointed interaction with the narratives uh, and removing certain issues. And, and there, there are, oh, yeah, there it's, are it's, subtleties, there are there are subtleties, subtleties in the Quran. Yes. They are absolutely mind blowing. I'll give you one. I don't know if you come across this one. The name of John the Baptist. Uh, no. Uh, Apparently, it's a mistake in the Quran. He is called you know, Yahya. Right. Well, I'm not sure how that's a mistake because that's his name. But anyway. You see, <laughs> no, this, this is my theory on it. Right, okay. It's a, it's a very interesting in bloody one week way of uh, looking at it. Yahya is actually a Hebrew word, Jahia or Yahya. Right? It is only used once in the entire text of the Bible. Right. In the Old Testament, Jahia was a priest in the temple. Ah, so. Okay? And the word means God gives life. Right? So the Quran says that no one was given this name mm. before. Right? So the Christians claim, oh, this name basically is not the name of John the Baptist. His name was John, which is in Hebrew, Yohanna. Okay? Or Yohanna in the Arabic language. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's his proper name. That's his proper noun. John, Yohanna, yeah. Yohanna. Right? Yahya isn't. But when you read the Quran, Quran explains that John was born of a barren woman. She was, uh, his birth was also a miraculous birth in the sense that his mother was barren. Yes. Uh, and uh, the word is Akir in the Arabic language, right? So the term Yahya is a title used for him rather than his proper name, right? Because Yahya means God gives life. Oh, I see. God gives life even from a barren. Okay, I mean, you read the tafsir literature, some, some, some commentators actually explain that. But hold on a second, there is something very subtle in the same chapter about John the Baptist. And what is that? When you go to verse 13, Allah uses a term for John, for Yahya, for Yahya, which is not used for anyone else in the Quran, and it is used only once in the entire text of the Quran. And that term is Hanan. The term is Hanan, Hanan min ladunna. Uh, and it means that he is, uh, I forgot the, the meaning of Hanan. Uh, it is, uh, I think, something like mercy or a, a present or a gift. Okay, Hanan min ladunna, that he is a present or a gift from us, right? Now, the term Hanan is exactly the same word as Yohanan and Yohanna and John. When you look at the root words, because these are Semitic languages, yeah. Arabic, Hebrew, and Aramaic, yeah, yeah. so the term, the root word is exactly the same. You hanana, uh, hanana, the term is Hanana, right? And it is only used once in the Quran. It is only used in reference to John the Baptist, Yahya. So it is as if the term or the name or the proper name of John the Baptist or Yahya was coded within the same chapter where it talks about not not calling him John I mean the Quran doesn't call him John or Yohanan or Yohanna but the term is used for him specifically for him for no one else in the entire text of the Quran so Yahya is a title and his proper name is there also now tell me uh, tell him that Muhammad, that's right. Muhammad was planning all this and making yeah. all this up. He was a, theolo a theologian par excellence who knew Hebrew, he knew all the subtleties oh, yeah. of the languages. He was a great scholar all... with a huge library and uh, even though he couldn't... Yeah, uh... yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, so mm. this is one of those yeah. subtleties, yeah. Mm. which is absolutely mind-blowing. And another one that's been pointed out by a Western scholar, I forget, I forget her name, one of the, uh, I forget it was Angelica Newith or the other lady, uh, about the name of the first followers of Jesus. Uh, you'd expect an Arab to refer to them as Christians because that's what you'd think. The first followers of Jesus were Christians, weren't they? But actually, he uses the word uh, Nazare, uh, Na Nazarene uh, or the Nazarite. Nasara. 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 Nasara, that's yes, the word. Nasara yeah. is basically, scholars claim it means Nazarenes. Exactly. Yeah. So the, but, or Hawariun. Hawariun, basically another term used for the followers of Jesus is the supporters. Right. The supporters. They are the supporters. Right? But to call him a Nazarene is yeah. a very specifically historically accurate title or name hmm. which you wouldn't expect someone to know. Yes. You, at the very, you, you call them Christians, but not Nazarenes, which is actually correct. Jesus was called, uh, the disciples were called that as well at that time. Um, so but then they're not argued that Nazarenes was a term widely known in Arabia for the Christians at the time of Muhammad. I mean, I don't know if that's the case. 
but don't you think they can come? come the the back author, she, she said that that is a rather obscure term that would not have been an obvious term to right. use. That right. was her argument. It wasn't right. evident from because that context that that word would right. have been used. Um, mostly people around Arabia were uh, Nestorians and Monophysites and uh, uh, yeah. Orthodox Christians in Syria. Yeah. These are the main Christians. Yeah, that's so there are many names they can be called, but to call them yeah. by, by that historically specific name, which is actually accurate, is very surprising for a 7th century shepherd stroke businessman stroke. And, and uh, there are other things as well, yeah, Paul. To, there are to, so believe, many to know other things. That. Yeah. For example, uh, if you look at the example of the Pharaoh, oh, that one, right? yeah. Yeah. his body being preserved. Yeah. A lot of people overlook a very um, important nu nuance here, and that is. That Allah only talks about Pharaoh when it comes to preserving of the body. He doesn't talk about other kings like that. Mm. There are other kings who are mentioned. Um, the king of Abraham. Abraham was dealing with the king. It was mentioned. The dialogue is mentioned. He's not Nimrod, by the way. A lot of people actually claim that's Nimrod. Mm. Uh, that's an anachronism, by the way. And Nimrod was a later title given to Babylonian and Assyrian kings. No. Uh, and appears so, in Genesis, of course. And amazingly, yeah. the Quran doesn't call him Nimrod. No. Mm. When it comes to Pharaoh, he's called Pharaoh. But the king of Abraham, who happened to be maybe perhaps Mes a Mesopotamian, uh, early Mesopotamian king, he's not Nimrod. Nimrod was a later title, and I think Nimrod is a title borrowed from uh, Judeo Christian literature. Right. Uh, it is not. Uh, so Israel Israeli rather than. It's, it's from the Israeli. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. But here, uh, there is something very subtle here. Pharaoh's body will be preserved. Mm. As if we are being told that they are getting mummified. Only the, only the Egyptians had pioneered mummification of their royal uh, pers personnel to that level. I mean, we don't find, I mean, we do have mummifications in other cultures as well. We do find mummies of important people in other cultures, but not to that level, not to that magnitude. How the Egyptians had taken it to the next level, yeah. uh, to an Embalming. extent that they were actually transporting this uh, to other cultures. Even Alexander, the, uh, mm. Alexander's body was mummified. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Egyptian priests were brought from right. Egypt to Babylon. They mummified his body and the body was put into a coffin, a giant coffin or a sarcophagus. Yeah, yeah. And then it was transported. Yeah. Uh, and then Ptolemy decided to confiscate it. He was on his way back to Macedonia. Oh, really? Yeah, Ptolemy in Egypt, he decided to confiscate it and the body was put in Alexandria and it remained until the Roman period. Yes. The actual body of Alexander remained until the Roman period and then it was uh, there was, uh, I don't know what happened, there was an earthquake or something like that. I don't remember the details, I read about it a while back. And then the body was lost forever. Yeah. And this is in, in the Roman period, when the Romans... So this was Alexandria. So mummification was a business that Egyptians pioneered. And Allah specifically mentions that about Pharaoh, that your body will be preserved for posterity to, to look at and take lessons. These are some of these, you know, these subtleties. This is fine, big things. People can say, oh, they were borrowed. The mm. stories mm. were borrowed and they were changed and they were twisted and then they, they were put in this way in the Quran. But what about the subtleties? And there, there, there are so many. By the way, there is a book written uh, it's in Arabic. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad knows the title. Uh, it talks about these subtleties in the Quran. Some of them are absolutely mind blowing. You, know, you, can't, you can't think. Well, maybe you can come on Bong in Theology and talk about those as well. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can. I mean, let, let um, me look into it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make a list of maybe 10 most important subtleties yeah, yeah. in the Quran that could not have come from uh, an Arabian shepherd, let's say. Right? Uh, and these subtleties are very, very important for us to consider. Yeah, definitely. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. Well, but, oh, yeah, of course. Sorry, I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> because I don't want to keep using no, no, uh, sanitizer. No, yeah. of course. Because we're um, shaking so many hands here. So we, you end up. You I know. have sanitizer if anyone. Huh? I have sanitizer. Sorry? Sanitizer. Or shall we have <laughs> no handshake? Something very nice talking to you. And you, you too. Again. We'll and, talk and again. We have the same touch. Have a good holiday back in London. <laughs> as long as you're here. And then you're going back to uh, France. Yeah, on Friday. But I, I'm back on, well, as you know, for something else on the first. And I'm here for a while, as long as I want to, basically. Okay. But I've got a, I've got a couple. Of, I've got projects. Are you, anyway, I'm are you planning to put up uh, your conversations here on Vlogging Theology? You might as well do that. If you have any good conversations. Oh, well, you see. Well, if anyone films them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
We'll see. But we'll see. Actually, I don't know. Commit myself. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if look, if you end up having a good conversation, with someone, it can go on blogging theology. Why not? I mean, I don't usually do that. I don't put my speakers' corner stuff. No. Generally speaking, no. on my. It's, it's got to fit in with the other. Yeah. So it can't absolutely. just be any old. But sometimes yeah. if it's a good conversation. Yeah. 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 And yeah. We'll see. We'll see who turns yeah, up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Cool. But um, nice to see you, man. And you too. I wanted to tell you. Uh, I don't know what these guys. Uh, they're gone. They're gone. <laughs> yeah, and and um, you're doing amazing work. Just continue. I mean, I always I always talk to brothers and. Uh, Thank you.